What a great story and testimony, but it's not not just a great story. Look at all the people's lives that that ended up touching in the revival that broke out there. How did that thing go seven hours? Tell me about that. What happened? <laughs> uh, well, hi, Steve. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it was like all the meetings. We we did like a Friday night, and then we did a Saturday morning, and then we did a Saturday night, and then we did a Sunday, and then wow. we did a Sunday evening. Really? And it was incredible. It was like we were riding a wave of God's glory. Um, the thing that really hit me when I watched that video, uh, Steve, is that from one word of knowledge on a show, on a replay, that just shows how the Lord's words, when he speaks, it doesn't return void. Even on a replay, somebody can get absolutely uh, healed, um, delivered, you know, just from a truth, from a revelation, from a word of knowledge. But the thing that really struck me with that, and I mean, I was in tears watching the video uh, when I saw it the very first time, because it dawned on me that a move of God actually occurred from a from a word of knowledge. It's yeah. like little keys that open big doors. You know, it's so funny. I was at a, uh, I was at a conference. I was speaking at a Tommy Barnett's church in Phoenix. I remember, uh, you know, they walked up to me and they says, are you Nathan French? I said, yes, I am. And they said, well, you're, you know, we're so excited that you're coming to speak in our church in Texas. And I said, well, what church are you, you know? And they told me and, and I said, well, that sounds great. And they said, well, you act like you didn't know you were going to be coming. It's only a week away. And I said, oh, I said, yeah, I'm just thinking about today. I'm thinking about today, you know, and then they just laughed. It was funny. But usually I don't know what I'm doing a week out or two weeks out because I don't want to be in the worries of tomorrow. But I do know uh, that my team helps me to stay on track. Like, hey, you're going to be flying out tomorrow morning. And I'm like, OK, great. You know, I don't have to have a lot of notice. Um, but I just I love hearing the story that we had uh, multiple meetings that lasted six to seven hours, Steve. Nobody wow. wanted to leave. And I mean, we even released people after two, three hours. Um, but deaf ears were opened. Uh, the people with issues with sight were, were healed. Um, uh, you know, God was growing legs out. One lady, her leg grew out so significantly that um, a, another gal who was short, she said, I want to be taller. And she had faith that if God could grow a leg out like she saw, like we all witnessed many legs growing out to match wow. the other, fixing back problems. Anyway, this lady says, I want to be taller. And so she comes up for prayer to be taller and her brother's there with her. And she's like an inch shorter than her brother when they back to back. And I said, OK, I said, well, let's believe God for it. If he can grow a leg out on one side, imagine he could grow, grow two legs out and make somebody taller. So I just went with it because of her faith. Anyway, God grew both legs out. She stood back to back with her brother and she was uh, amazed because they were exactly the same height and the whole oh church just goodness. erupted. And that it was just one of those crazy. things where, you know, you had to be there to really yeah, understand the magnitude of it, but it's still happening there for them. There's, they they said question. the move of God sparked and it's continuing. And the pastor is getting ready to, you know, fo follow on, on some of these prophetic words that were released about expansion. And they're going to be building another building. I know for sure uh, that yeah. they'll need a bigger facility. Let me ask you a question about God's the done. words of knowledge that you had. Um, is what's your perspective or understanding or whatever, however, to ask this, whether when God gives a word, it's picked up. I don't know if it was picked up days later, weeks later. He didn't say how long before that the recording was. Maybe it was in that video and I forgot to notice it. But what's your perspective that God knowing these would pick, this guy would be cleaning the toilet listening to this show. Let's just, what if it was three months later or six months later, he gives a word to you. Does it work that way? He gives a word to you. And it puts well, it in the can, so to speak. Great it's question. Okay. Yeah, talk yeah. about that. Okay, well, I mean, first of all, you, you know, that's a great question. We know God is timeless. Yeah. He's the beginning and the end. He starts with the end in mind. He knew that he was going to be watching that show shortly after the broadcast on a replay. God already knew because he, he's there. And so um, I love that about him is that he's outside of time. But he knew that Josh would be in the bathroom, cleaning the bathroom, um, which I actually saw him in the bathroom. I didn't say it right there, but I did see it. And so the fact that he was cleaning the bathroom is like, uh, it, it was just interesting because he's in there serving the church. He's frustrated. He just said in that clip 
that he was frustrated because he'd been seeing all these people getting healed. You know, to somebody who hasn't yet been touched, uh, witnessing everybody be touched is kind of almost can make you feel a little like, you know, what about me? Am I not good enough? Or it, did I do something wrong to deserve this? You know, why not me? And I, I just feel like if people, instead of getting bitter or uh, moving away from God or being mad at God, instead, if they would just look at people are being healed and I'm next and just believe for it and stay in faith. But the Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sad yeah, or sick. Yeah. So a sad heart has a heart time believing for something for an extended period of time but if you hear a story like that and it's the testimony of jesus that prophesies this is what he'll do again you start to actually be able to recognize hey i could be next and then you start thanking god and position yourself in gratitude gratitude is one of the keys that opens the door uh, to divine breakthrough so it's, it's really about our attitude and how well, we're processing some people get jealous or frustrated but if you'll turn it into praise father i thank you that i'm next and start speaking according to what you're believing for so let me ask this this other question uh so josh is there cleaning the toilet He's not doing any of the things you're telling people you need to do. He's not necessarily staying in faith. His heart was hurting. He wasn't, what you just did was a good, tell us this is the way you ought to be. You might get healed sooner, I think is what you're teaching here. And I like that. But how is it that, do you see healing operating at God's outside of time? Did he pick a moment in time and say, I'm going to get, Josh, he's going to get this. And Nathan, give this. Was God, knowing he he wasn't in the place he should be, just lavishing grace? That's kind of what I think I'm seeing. But what are your thoughts yeah. on that? I, I believe that it was an appointed time. God wanted to do something. There's a lot of reasons why God does what he does. His ways are higher um, above finding out. Sometimes we don't understand his ways. But you, when you start to understand his heart, um, and you start to get the revelation that, man, he is good and he wants to heal. He already paid for it. But sometimes to maximize the impact, he'll wait for an appointed time in history where hearts are right, where hunger is right, where repentance occurs, where people are crying out from from a, a, a desperation for more of him. And, and then he says, you know what? I see that your heart is right. I see that you're ready. And to maximize my miracle power, I'm not just going to do this for you, but I'm going to I'm going to cause a whole church to come alive. I'm going to cause a whole uh, people group to come into an expectation for something good, uh, you know, to occur. And I mean, th there were so many miracles because as soon as the miracles started happening, it's like one led to another that led to another. I, I don't think anybody was in the meeting uh, or those meetings that didn't get touched by the power of God. And my goal was, hey, as long as this takes tonight, I'm willing to stay and pray for every single person. Yeah, I believe yeah. God wants to heal everyone. And my goodness, the more we saw it, the easier it was to believe and the easier it was to see more of it. That's really, really good. I'm I'm looking at the notes here and I realize we had some list of things to go through. So I guess we'll jump yeah. in. This was okay. all for free. <laughs> we get this. This is the <laughs> bill had to pay for this. Uh, so the first thing on my list is says the trumpet. Let's begin to talk about that. What what are you gonna tell us about that? Well, I kept thinking about that word that was given through uh, Prophet Kim Clement, where he was saying Trump is a trumpet. Yeah. And I saw a whole bunch of trumpets. Um I, I have I have shofars. I love shofars. I I I, I like to blow shofars when, when the Lord says it's time. You know, blow your shofar. Blow it this way. You, you know, um, there's something about the voice of God. Uh, the shofar is like a. It's it's more than an instrument. It's it actually sends shock waves through the realm of the spirit. So I was with Amanda Grace a while ago, and God told me to give a watch away. And I, I yeah, I gave a watch to her husband, and and then she turns and says, Nathan, God just told me to give you my shofar. I got Whoa. it right here. It's uh, it's got a unique sound. Steve, can I blow the shofar? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, this is good. Those shofars are actually hard to blow if you're not really practiced at it. So, as I've, I've done it, it can be See hard. These? Whoa, that's a, a whoa. This is this is one that was given to me by a, a Jewish man. Um, this is one that I just uh, received a short time ago from Israel that somebody uh, got me. And then this one is the the one that Amanda Grace just gave me here when we were uh, preaching in Florida. 
um, together in a, in a tent revival. Nice. And um, anyway, so these shofars are all different. They all sound different. It's just like people, when the voice of the Lord comes through you, um, it's unique and it's, it's different. Yeah. So here, I'll blow this one. This is how okay. this one sounds. Nice. Yeah, you do. That's you pretty. Do good. You, pretty loud. Yeah, you're good. You're you. You blow that well. You and Johnny Enlow are probably among the best I've heard. Now that I've heard, wow. you sing. that's a good tone you got out of that thing. Good for you. Amen. So so anyway, when I think about the shofar, it, to me, it represents the trumpet or the voice of God uh, speaking. And there's something about the tones. Um, you know, there's different tones and there's yeah. different meanings behind the, the tones and the notes. Um, just like there's different words that God uses and, you know, like teruah, um, you know, and you can learn about that. But um, but I think about the shofar representing the voice of God. And when they shouted and they marched around uh, Jericho, you know, they used these instruments. They didn't have yeah. metal instruments back then. They had they had ram's horns and, you know, these different um, musical instruments they would make from animal horns. And they would blow and they would shout. And it was in that shouting and that, you know, responding to the Lord that these walls mm. came tumbling down. And so this is what God is doing in our nation. There's many people that are assigned to be trumpets that are anointed and appointed. And God's bringing them out in the open from hiding. Some of them have been hidden in obscurity and they feel insignificant. But yet God has a call on them. And there's people who have been marked as generals to come forward and lead battles and win as victors. And um, so I, I'm excited about the timing that we're in. Of course, it's becoming more and more apparent that, you know, uh, not only was Trump chosen to be the president of the United States of America this for the second term, yeah. um, but he's about to be put back in. I've been holding to that. I've never wavered right. on what I said uh, it, regarding it. I've been him. And I've, I've actually uh, seen a lot of scrutiny of those who have uh, held to that. But uh, I look at it as, you know, you got to say what you believe God is saying and then don't waver when there's persecution. Yeah, good, 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 good. All right. Now, then, um, and if, when I read these off, because this is the second thing on your list, if if you've already somehow covered it, <laughs> uh, let me know. But it says grace to hear. Number The point number two is grace to hear. Do you know what you're going to Yeah, say? The, the Lord, as he pours his spirit out on all flesh right now in this timing um, of heaven on earth, uh, we're seeing where, you know, he said in the end times, I'll pour my spirit out on all flesh. And so yeah. we're seeing this outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all flesh when there's certain ingredients like hunger, like uh, heart posture before him from, um, you know, desiring to be led of the spirit. You know, he he pours his spirit out to equip and empower people who are willing to do what he says, uh, even before they've heard him. And yeah. I, I think that's a significant thing, because if you aren't really hearing God, it's it's really easy to be discouraged. But if you hear God and you start to get it right, it, as you respond, you see his grace, you see his favor, you see his blessing, you start seeing breakthrough. Uh, you know, this morning, the Lord told me to read uh, something from Beatitude from this uh, Sermon on the Mount. Is that OK to read that, Steve? Yeah. Yeah. And let me just comment here real quick. Um to the people, there's you're hearing a little bit of popping in Nathan's sound. That's what we tried to get out of. We thought we had it. It's not too bad right now, but just so you know, that's uh, we that was what kept us from coming out. We kept trying to work on that, but so we can't fix it today. Is it seems like? But yeah, go for it, Nathan. Okay, so this is the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, I bless the sound in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Uh, this is taken out of Matthew uh, five, the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them, saying, Blessed, spiritually prosperous, happy, and to be admired are the poor in spirit, meaning those devoid of spiritual arrogance, yeah. those who regard themselves as insignificant, for, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. Blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace are those who mourn over their sins and repent, for they will be comforted. 
when the burden of sin is lifted, blessed, inwardly peaceful, spiritually secure, worthy of respect, are the gentle, the kind-hearted, the sweet-spirited, and the self-controlled, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed, joyful, nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who actively seek right standing with God, for they will be completely satisfied. Blessed, wow. content, sheltered by God's promises are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed, anticipating God's presence, spiritually mature, are the pure in heart, those with integrity, moral courage, and godly character, for they will see God. Blessed, spiritually calm, with life joy in God's favor, are the makers and maintainers of peace, for they will express his character and be called the sons of God. Blessed, comforted by inner peace and God's love are those who are persecuted for doing what is morally right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. And then finally, in 11, this is Matthew 5, 11, says, blessed, morally courageous and spiritually alive with life joy in God's goodness are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of your association with me. Be glad and exceedingly joyful <laughs> for your reward in heaven is great absolutely inexhaustible for in this same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you second chronicles 36 now tell 16 people, talks tell about people that. which version of the bible that is because people say which version is that yeah that's the amplified version okay um, good okay. that i'm reading from awesome people use i like, like the amplified because it actually has some hidden meaning that yeah. is from hebrew and greek yeah that's really really good um, now you talked about a prophecy to be. <coughs> excuse me, you got a cough here. Prophecy will be fulfilled. What, what did you have in mind with that? That's number three. Well, every everything that the Lord has spoken is you're starting to see all these things come to pass. And I think that there's many people who are saying, well, it didn't happen, so then it must have been wrong. And I feel like there's even people like we saw this where some prophets had said this is about Trump, the trumpet, that, you know, they must have been wrong and they apologize for getting it wrong because after all, he's not actually he didn't actually win because he'd be in the seat. And the reality is, it's becoming abundantly clear that, in fact, he did win. But some of those prophets, in fear of losing their following, uh, came and said, well, I guess we got it wrong. And they apologized, thinking, well, if, if it turns out that it wasn't wrong, people will find that out. But in the meantime, they're not going to lose their popularity. Um, the reality is, is the Lord told me, if you apologize for obeying him and saying what he said, if you apologize, you can actually fund rebellion. And the Lord doesn't fund rebellion. And so there's a lot of people who are in rebellion against God that are not hearing what the Lord is saying because of that rebellion. It's like a blinder. And I saw this vision of the Lord opening up the eyes of the blind and causing people who don't see correctly to begin to see correctly. So there's a prophetic wave that's hitting the body of Christ right now in this time and season where people are going to begin to see uh, like seers that have a grace to be able to see what's coming and to know how to adjust according to his will. And so what we're going to see is we're going to see uh, Trump come back in to finish uh, the good work that God began in him. But it's not about a man. We know it's not about a person. It's about what God wants to do through each person if they'll step into the thing that they're called to do to fulfill the purpose of their assignment. So God's giving a grace right now to the body of Christ to understand not just what he wants them to do uniquely, um, but exactly um, specifically who to work with to bring that greater uh, expression of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so there's people that are being matched right now, linked, um, even for the mighty harvest of souls. And there is going to be a profound impact over the next few years 
where we're going to see a massive ushering in of the mighty harvest of the lost uh, being saved. I mean, we, we I, I just finished 12 years in the pastorate and I was excited when God said, I'm releasing you from the pastorate. And I was like, praise the Lord. You know, our church had never been doing better, Steve. We had th we were up to three meetings a week. Uh, God's pouring his spirit out. We're having revival events, different things that are happening. And all of a sudden the Lord's like, OK, but this is your last year in the pastorate. I'm officially releasing you to go after the massive harvest. So I'm a harvester. I think about souls. I can't stop thinking about souls coming into the kingdom, but I would love to see a remnant army raised up specifically, not just to get people to say a prayer, but to lead them into houses that are worthy to disciple people up in their, in their calling. So good. So good. So good. So you, uh, let's keep on that just for another couple of minutes. You were a pastor in, in many ways you are a pastor. You're because, Pastoring, pastor's pastor. It's like I, I've said this on the air a couple of times where where John Wimber said people were all worried about the elders this and the elders that. And John Wimber said, an elder is someone who elds. And and so that was his clever way of saying, if you're a pastor, you pastor. It's by nature what you do. Um, why do you feel like God's releasing you from the official four walls of the church? What well, I mean, I'm still going to be a part of a church. I've been attending different churches. We have some meetings coming up like June, June 14. I'll be ministering. Uh, it's a Friday evening at New Horizon in Fife. And I love them. And so I'll be doing an event. It's going to be a revival that, do night. Do we have that uh, graphic? If, we, if that's the one, the graphic. Uh, no, but you can put up the other graphic. I'll be in uh, that place, too, if you want to put that graphic up. Yeah, this one is, um, this can be tremendous. In fact, um, Brother Mark, he's a he's an apostle, just a mighty man of God. He's putting this on and there will be people coming from all over the world. Every tribe, tongue and nation will be impacted. Um, this is a, a wonderful event to be a part of. So make, make sure you mark your calendar for that. Um, and then check our, our website as well for upcoming events, because we're actually going to be doing another uh, rock revival event. That one that we just did, Steve, that yeah. I announced on the show, um, it was a great turnout. We had five to six hundred people. I don't know if it was five fifty or whatever it was, but we, we were at the Marriott. Um, I said the courtyard by accident. It was actually the regular Marriott, but it was yeah. a full house with people from all over the world. Nice. And we had an incredible outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so many people saved, healed, delivered. And that was um, probably one of my favorite events that we've ever done. And so we'll, we'll continue to do more. Uh, if people want information about the events, just go on the website uh, at the rock revival center.com or that ministry page is that's is my first one which one, one. yeah nathan french ministries.com we'll be announcing you can get on our email list and you'll be notified when we do another event here in washington uh, we're also getting ready to do another event down at our building that you you guys help support the yeah. tent revivals that we were doing down there and that's just been a tremendous thing that god has opened up the whole west coast of washington uh, and he's been moving down there we've been adding um you know just different things a guy just came to the house here and and dropped off a whole big order of these LED bulbs so we could light up the whole school with brand new bulbs. Really? Uh, so we're going to get an Ivy lift in there. We're going to finish that that uh, building out so we can start using the inside over the next several weeks. We're going to paint the yeah, building you, outside so, now that the weather's changing and all those things are happening. So did you just, uh, I know you had the tent there. Did you, have you been working on it all along or did you just suddenly go in? No, we've been working on it. We've been doing like drywall. We've been changing out uh, boards. We, uh, you know, we've been drying it out. We, we did windows. We, we did uh, uh, um, half of the roof project is done. We need another 40,000 for the other half to be finished, but we'll be able to use it. I would think in the next, maybe in the next 30 days, we'll be starting to use it for meetings. Good. So we're just doing as much as we can. We're going to paint now that the weather's changing painting the outside a beautiful color. Uh, then we're going to paint on the inside, do some more drywall. And uh, we've got heaters turned on now, which heating was a big deal. Uh, and gosh, I mean, it's it's really incredible. I just ordered one of those big outdoor containers. So the stuff that's in the gymnasium can be moved out to the container so we could start to occupy. Really so we're, we're getting very close. The outbuilding, all the bricks have come on the on the four bay uh, bus garage. So we've made a lot of progress. And so that's an incredible, uh, you know, incredible you, you, thing. 
you've been in a season of purchasing that, like that building, especially the tent was another thing that we helped. I, I always forget what did we fully, we did we, were we sewing into the tent or were, I didn't never, I didn't even worry about it. I make the donation, but uh, we've sewed our, with our people's investment pretty generously and to get that stuff going for you. And we're really happy to do it. You had some words and many people have had words about the coming wealth transfer. Uh, uh, and even in fact, I'm going to announce probably next week, probably Monday, I've told people we'll buy a building, but we're not ready to announce when and where it is and all that. We're ready by Monday. Uh, we're going to close on this thing right in the next few Woo! days. And it's really exciting <laughs> what we're going to be doing. And, and people will be delighted when they hear the details of it. We're really excited about that. But you've been talking about the wealth transfer. But uh, for I'll just say it like this, Nathan, for 30 years, I started getting excited in 1994. I remember the year, and they started talking about the wealth transfer, and I'd never heard that preached. Well, okay, 30 years has gone by, and there were some pretty lean times all during this time. I never stopped believing in it, but I I got to a place where I thought, when, Lord, when are you going to just keep prophesying this? So uh, how do we know this is not this is it? What, what are your thoughts? Because you said in this well, word... That's something over the next three months. So talk about that. Yeah, it's so it's so important that people understand the times and the seasons that we're yeah. in. I mean, I've been doing things that God has asked me to do. Like he said, go and buy this certain land. And, you know, he, he, he didn't want my money being devalued in the banking system that's failing. And so, you know, he, he showed me you're going to buy land. When he said, I'm going to give you territory. I thought he meant spiritually. So I asked him, do you mean spiritually? And he says, um, in both natural and spiritual territory. So then I understood more. So sometimes just asking God a question to clarify what he's talking about uh, helps you to be able to adjust. But um, he, he told me, he said, go look. In other words, go shop. If you're shopping, then that's showing God faith. And some people are, they're not showing God faith. They're just waiting for God to do something. He's often waiting for us to do something before or he'll release something. You're but saying, I mean, we purchased, I don't know, nine. Well, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you're saying if somebody believes God wants them to have property, but the money is not there, plain and simple, it's not yeah. there. They should go shopping. Yeah, go shopping. Like, I mean, you know, there's two kinds of farmers. The farmer that puts seed in the ground and, and uh, knows that there's going to be a season where the rain will come. Once the seed's there, God sees it, sends the rain, spiritually speaking. But there's other farmers that are like, well, we'll wait and see what happens. And when the rain comes, it's too late to put seed in the ground because it, now it's all muddy and the seed goes too deep and it's lost and it doesn't produce. So there's something about, you know, that God's about to do something. You start to prepare. Like as an example, this building, the ocean building when God said leave tomorrow morning I want to show you a property I didn't go Lord I I'm not doing that I didn't tell him why I would but I did want to kind of reason through it because my tendency is to try to understand a little more so I just said well Lord we don't want property down at the ocean we want property right here I mean our church was meeting in Gig Harbor and in Tacoma and I'm like why you know why all the way over there and the Lord didn't say anything so then I took that as, okay, he doesn't want me to question, just wants me to do what he's asking. So I told my wife, I have to leave tomorrow morning. I'm going down to the ocean. God wants to show me a property. And she's like, well, honey, but we don't want a property down there. So we both, my wife and I, told God why we didn't want a property <laughs> down by the ocean. But we... I did, didn't stop me from acting. So it's okay to like question sometimes and get into reason and logic and then recognize, you know, that's really not where it's at. We need to be led by the spirit, not leaning on our understanding. So as long as you figure it out, but I did what God said. I left the next morning. I didn't even know where I was going. And most people aren't going to go unless they know where they're going. I just knew he said, go down to the ocean. So I just started to drive and it was about 20 minutes out and the Lord says, call your uncle. I didn't get the next step until I obeyed the first step. And then once I got the first step, uh, I obeyed the first step. Then the second step opened up as I was showing faith in process of going towards what he had asked me to do. And I asked my uncle, he said, ask your uncle for the property. What? It, and he knows about it. So I just called and I said, uncle, do you know about a property? He's like, well, just yesterday, this, the local elementary school opened up. It was the police substation. He said it used to be the elementary school school for Ocean City. It's it's right down here by Ocean Shores. He said, I'll take you over and show you. And he said, God told me to tell you about it just yesterday. 
and I hadn't had a chance to call you, and here you're coming down. So wow. he, so now I know that I heard God. I know God's got a purpose. God spoke to somebody else. I'm looking for the wisdom of a multitude of counsel. Um, you know, that's assigned to speak into yeah, that matter. Right. And and when I asked him about it, and he knew about it, then I'm like, okay, I'm on track. So God said, call your uncle. I did. Then my uncle responds and he's like, God told me to tell you about it. So now I know I'm on track. So I get there and I'm looking at this building that needs a lot of work. And the last thing I want to do is obligate myself to a whole lot of effort when I'm such a busy guy chasing the kingdom and traveling the nations. But it, it was what God wanted. So he said to me, buy the building. I'm standing there and I see a white tent in the field. And I'm looking at this white tent in the field in the spirit. And I know what God's saying is I want you to put up a tent in this field. We're going to have revival. So I'm looking at this building and I'm thinking, okay, Lord, what do I do first? Because you know what you're doing. He said, buy the building. I'm like, how do I buy a building if I don't have the money? He said, faith, those who don't have come and buy. How do I buy if I don't have? And he said, faith. So anyway, I said, what do I do first? He says, put in an offer. Lord, how much do I offer? (laughs) He says, offer full price. Now I'm going to offer full price on a building that I can't afford to buy. And God sees that as faith. And he, and and so I'm, I'm struggling with the, I, I guess I'm struggling with the uh, integrity. Like, do I, you know, like just, am I testing God to, to, to put him in a situation where he has to come through or I give him a bad name? I started reasoning through this, thinking through this. And then I thought, you know, I'm not going to get into logic and reason. I'm going to focus on being led by the spirit. I'm just going to do what he says. I'm going to put in an offer and I'm going to make it full price because that's what he said to do. So I did that that very day. And my goodness, um, Steve, uh, when we when we put in that offer, God gave me the next step. See, he only gave me the step, you know, leave tomorrow morning. Uh Okay. Then he says, go down to the ocean. Then he says, call your uncle. These are all steps where I had to follow and I had to act on what I heard. And then boom, we put in an offer. And then miraculously, the Lord said, don't take any offerings and I will back you. So now I've got to trust God. I I put up a tent like God said. It was given to me. It was a free tent. I said, if you want me to put up a big white tent like what you saw, uh, then Lord, I need you to supply me with a tent. So somebody gives me a tent. And uh, so so now I've got this big giant tent, but I don't know how to set it up. I said, God, I need you to send me some people who know how to put up a big tent uh, so that we can put it in the field. And a crew that I'd never met before, Steve, showed up that morning at the lawn and set up my tent for me. I don't even know who these people are. I can't even tell you their names today. I don't know who they were. Uh, Like seven, eight guys showed up, a crew that was skilled in putting up large tents. My goodness, they put up the tent. And then the Lord said, now have meetings. So I just started having meetings. I'm like, just trying to do the next thing. So I set up, I started doing meetings and I met with a small group down there. And the one guy says, Nathan, God told me revival would begin on the West Coast of Washington State when somebody put up a big white tent in this field. And I said, really? He goes, this is the fulfillment to that promise that I've held on to for 20 years. Did you say that when, when, when someone put up a white tent or put a white tent on that field? Which did you say? Yeah, he saw a big white tent go up in a field down there. Okay. Yeah, he didn't know it would be in that field. He just said yeah. it was down there in that area. And there's only a few fields it could have been. But he knew when we put up this big white tent that God supplied he knew this was it. And so he started attending the meetings and it was just the town started coming alive. Miracles started breaking out. Uh, The Lord said, don't take up any offerings and trust me uh, for for the resource until I tell you. So that he wanted me to do offerings, but not initially. So we did like five meetings under that tent, Steve. And you were one of the people who helped us significantly. And I got to say, Uh, In those five meetings, the whole school was paid off in full debt free. So our building paid for today. We're getting ready to start using it here in just the next several weeks. Hopefully within the next month or two, we will actually occupy the inside for revival events. And we'll start bringing all these 
uh, prophetic voices in to minister there. And we'll see the fulfillment of these promises of God. But I know there's a move of God stirring, not yeah. just in Washington State, but in Washington, D.C. You're going to start seeing the move of God coming from, from the west to the east, from the north to the south. And people will link shields, pastors that were worried about partnering with other people are starting to give up control and let God be in control. And those churches that really let God do what he wants in the celebration and their services, they'll get filled up with people uh, from all over because God is pouring his spirit out right now like I've never seen before. So good. And then talk, talk even a little bit more about the next three months. Was that a, a sudden three months that's going to – this? Wealth transfer, was there a specific Yes, word? I it, saw people actually investing in um, in precious metals. Really? I saw people buying um, silver. Even I think silver is going to do better than gold, even though gold has done well and consistent. But tangible things, gold, silver. Remember how the Bible says, the Lord says that the gold is mine, the silver is mine. Um, it's a currency, you know, the gold standard. If you research, you'll find out that this is a season of time where the Lord is going to start to prosper uh, people operating outside of this globalist agenda, this mechanism of, of our devaluation of the American dollar, uh, the currency. God is doing something with the currency to bless people. I know some people have invested in, you know, different currency, dong and dinar, and, and some of it just looks like, okay, it's probably never going to happen. But there's something that God is doing right now through the currency that is setting up for people to be exceedingly blessed as Very he begins good. to transfer wow. the wealth from the wicked into the hands of the righteous. And you know why he's doing it? He's doing it because he wants souls and it takes money to win souls. It takes it resources and we will reap what we sow, meaning That's what we invest knowledge. in things it toward does. the kingdom will actually be quickly multiplied in the next uh, 90 days. I believe there's a, a, a godly uh, window where when we invest in what God cares about and he cares about souls, he cares about people coming into the kingdom and not just saying a prayer, but being discipled. And he, he loves when, when we value souls. The Bible says, he who wins souls is wise and some send and some go. And I do both. I go myself and I send many other evangelists into the nations for the glory of God. And so more crusades are going to happen. No name ministers are going to start sprouting up doing big things for God. And there will be a massive wealth transfer, lands and buildings. I mean, God said, I'll give you houses you didn't build, vineyards you didn't even have to plant. You'll, there'll be fruit on the vine of something you never even tended to. Wow. I mean, somebody just gave me a cabin in the mountains on land. I've got acres just was given to me and, and a log cabin on a mountaintop in gold rich country uh, in Liberty, Washington, of all oh, places. You research Liberty, Washington. There's gold claims everywhere. I was just there last week really? and I'm just looking at this land. I'm like, this was given to me completely free. That's a house I didn't build. And there's, I have a vineyard at this property that I did not have to plant. And so I'm seeing the Lord actually do things I've never witnessed him do before. I mean, some people are just believing for their debts to be paid. But what God's about to do is so much bigger than that. That's so good. So good. So good. Uh, let's do this. Let's pray for the people a little bit, see what God will say. I think we hit most of the points here. But let's go ahead and, and pray and I, and. Along the way, God gave me a word for someone, too, so I'll say that. But Amen. Ahead, Nathan, and see what God yeah. will show you. Amen. Okay, Father, I just thank you for every single person, Lord. We just rebuke every sickness, every disease, any spirit that's a lying spirit yes, that's Lord. been trying to torment your people. Uh, we command to loose them now and go yeah. in Jesus' name. We bind the voice of the stranger. We bind the voice of our own will. And Lord, thank you that you're leading us in all truth. You're teaching us your ways so we can be more than conquerors. And Lord, I thank you for the increase of your flame upon your people. I just release that fresh battle baptism of fire and the Holy Spirit over you. Uh, some of you, you're going to, you're going to speak in tongues. Some of, some of you have been taught that tongues is bad, but God doesn't give bad gifts. There's nine gifts mentioned. And by mm. the same Holy Spirit, any of those gifts can be imparted uh, just by the revelation that it's available to those who desire and earnestly uh, covet the greater gifts. And so I pray that the, the gift to prophesy accurately would come upon you. I pray for the unlocking of the seer uh, in, in this moment. I'm seeing 
seeing many people, I saw this earlier in the broadcast, Steve, where people who couldn't see before, uh, all of a sudden God opened up prophetic vision and they began to prophesy based on what they saw. Like Ezekiel 37, can these bones live? Yes, if you will prophesy. And there's this forth telling, a bold proclaiming that's coming on a, a remnant of people who are hungry uh, to be used of God. And so I just release that over you in Jesus' name. Um, I'm seeing another knee get healed. Uh, that's the testimony of Jesus, just like Brother Josh got his knee healed. Uh, just watching the broadcast, he was in the in the restroom. He was cleaning the toilets, a lowly thing, a humble thing to do to help his church. And Even on a replay, the Lord can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. So I just pray every person to be healed right now. I see God's healing a kidney on the right side. It's a woman. And the Lord's saying, I'm healing your kidney. You, you won't need that transplant because I'm touching it. By my stripes, you are healed. Yeah, we just speak that right now in Jesus' name. New kidney, whoosh, be released in the name of Jesus. Somebody else, I saw that you've been sad. It's another woman. Mm. You've been, you're sitting in your chair. God says you will no longer be sad, depressed, or fearful, but I'm actually causing my life and light to light you up, and you will be glad and not sad from this day forward. You will laugh in the joy of the Lord, and you'll experience encounters with God from this day forward. Another man, I'm seeing you wear like these suspenders. They're blue, a jean material. Uh, you know, you've been working outside. You came in. You're watching the show. The, the Lord says, oh, watch what I do. I'm about to expand your territory. I'm going to give you an increase concerning your land. You're going to purchase the property next door for the glory of God. And you'll be able to tell people that you heard this word and it sparked faith in you that released an entheos, a godly enthusiasm. And you began to uh, look towards what does God want to do? How much do I offer? And God supernaturally set it up for you to be expanded in your uh, territory. So I just release that over you. You're a territory taker in Jesus. Uh, and then one more. Um, I saw this person that had been struggling with, um, you know, migraines. And I feel like the Lord's just saying, I'm canceling the migraines. Mm -hmm those guys that have been looking at pornography, don't do that because you could be causing the migraine that your wife is so frustrated about. And so we just cancel the effects of every curse in Jesus name. And we release the purity of Jesus over the bride of Christ. And I just speak this over. You are righteous. You are holy. You are pure. And God has a plan to use everything for the good, according to those who love him. So I just pray your grace to abound, favor to increase, and that you'd begin to hear God in a whole new way and that it would be just a fantastic encounter that never ends in Jesus' name. And I just had this one word you were talking earlier and I, I started hearing it. I, then I grabbed my pen and I went down and started writing it. But I heard the word cantina. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and I knew this referred to a, a Mexican restaurant. I, the, it wouldn't surprise me if the Mexican restaurant in question is was called cantina something. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's Southern California. I, I think it's probably Riverside. Um, and I mm -hmm. and I heard the Lord say to to someone who will triangulate these words because it, you either just went to a cantina, you either own the cantina, you work there, you're you're a customer there. Something is going to mix and match for you to understand that this word is for you. And then you've been struggling over something, and the struggling is. You've been doing everything the Lord said and to the letter of the law. And the Lord said, remember, the it's not that you weren't supposed to be doing all that you did, but the Lord says, now it's time to go from the letter to the spirit. And I saw uh, a set of ears, or maybe it was even one ear, because that God showed me this one time and he just popped it in my head. And the ear was completely peeling and some bleeding and it's just worn out and then it fell to the ground and the lord said that some of your some of those hearing your ear is worn out from hearing but not doing and the lord says, the spirit uh, god's saying it's not the hearers of the word they're justified but the doer and everything nathan's saying today is kind of where he wants you to go if the sick need to be visited He's talking to you. This cantina word is someone about that needs to visit the sick, and it's been on your heart, and you've been resisting it because it's also not in your heart. 
Uh, but the Lord was speaking to me about the, this bow, and um, and and I felt like God said, "I know how much you like this bow. It's a very good brand, the Matthews brand." And uh, and so I thought, you know, I, I really like. I'm gonna gear it up. It's a little bit small for me, but I really like it. So I was gonna gear it all up, do some things to it, make it even better. And uh, the Lord says, "Don't don't get too comfortable with this bow, because I'm gonna have you give this bow away." Oh, and well, remember, you, know. you reap what you sow. So if you sow a bow, you get a more bows. And so I thought to myself, well, who can I give it to? Well, I was with my nephew and I had this bow and he was admiring it. I said, you like that bow? He says, I really like this bow. And I said, well, you know what? You can have it. So I gift the bow to my nephew. Well, he's all excited. He didn't even know that it came from his dad, you know, my brother. And so it, his dad gave it to me and then I gave it to him and it was just a cool thing. So the other day, Steve, I think it was three days ago, I get a phone call. And this man saw me on the show and he says, Nathan, I heard about your land acquisition and that you want to raise up young people and you want to teach them how to you know, just wow. how to have a good time, teach them Jesus. And he goes, and when, when I was watching the show, I was really impressed that I needed to give you um, some bows to donate some bows. And I said, is that right? He goes, yeah. He says, in fact, um, I'm going to, how many do you think you're going to bring out there? I said, I don't know, maybe 20 young people and he goes, you know, I think what I would like to do, I'm going to get you 20 bows and gear Whoa, them up. And good. I'm going to get you 20 bows. And so I'm thinking to myself, that's amazing. And I wonder what kind these bows are. So I talked to him again, and he's asking me, am I a left-hander, right-hander? You know, asking me about preferences and uh, about the string pole weight and all these things I don't really understand, but my brother does. So anyway, I just got off the phone with him just a few days ago, Steve, and he says, you know, I'm going to gear your bow up a little different because you have a long draw. And he says, but but um, these bows are very nice. He said, um, in fact, um, I'm the president of the Matthews Bow Company. <laughs> in fact, uh, wow. it's our family name. My brother's name is Matthew. He's the founder and I'm the president. And so I just want to give a shout out to Matthews Bows on here is they watched your show, Elijah's wow. Dreams. And they heard about that. I want to help young people that I want to disciple them. And I'll tell you what, that is a blessing. So he's sending me this, this package of bows from the Matthews company. So I was pretty fired up, Steve. Really good. And you know, so like, you reap what you sow. So remember, if you sow watches, you get watches, cars, you get cars, buildings, you get buildings, you know, homes, you get homes, boats, you get boats, planes, you get planes. So you got a plane coming to you, uh, Steve. And so do I. I already have been pledged a jet. Some of my wow. friends are jealous. And I said, I'll pray for you, you know, <laughs> but I'll bring them out in the plane. Then they'll be OK when the jet comes. Um, but I was pledged a jet and I'm excited about that. But it's not ever about the thing. It's about him. And as long as we keep him first, there's no thing that he would withhold from us as we diligently seek him. And so anyway, I just want to encourage that person that's asking God, like, what do you want me to do? Is there something that you would like me to do? He might ask you today to call somebody and encourage him. He might ask you to sow a gift. He might ask you to, you know, um, you know, to spend more time with him. Um, I've written so many of these prophetic words and sent them out and I've been bogged down trying to do it. And it's been a stressor. Um, our team was we got really busy with that. Now I, I didn't have a lot of free time and just trying to, uh, you know, give people prophetic words. I love to do it. It's a labor of love, um, but it's impossible for me to give everybody a prophetic word that asks. Yeah. Um, but what I can tell you is. If you want to learn how to hear the voice of God, you can. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger's they will not follow. And so I would say, if you want to learn to hear God's voice, uh, maybe for the first time or just to hear him better, um, you can keep developing your ear, uh, keep pursuing God, stay childlike in your faith and, and ask God questions. And as you do this, he'll literally start to unlock his voice in you, especially if you're willing to do what he asks. And if you'll do what he asks, like give a bow or or I want you to sew or, um, you know, give your car away. I mean, I've I've said. <laughs> 
I've seen so many things happen. It would be hard for me not to believe because I've seen so much at this point. So I just believe that everyone can get their faith in that place where they can just step out. God says, leave tomorrow morning. It's for your own good. We own a debt free school as a result of just an act of obedience. Wow. And one act of obedience brings a chain reaction. Another person obeys and then they get blessed. And, you know, it's like everybody is a part in this massive um, thing that God's doing to unlock people in their purpose and destiny. And hearing God is so important. It's the most important thing, uh, I think, it, because you can't follow a God that you don't hear. You can read what he said, but if you don't know what he's saying, you miss out on all the things he's trying to tee up for you. And so don't miss a thing. Learn to hear God's voice. Um, you guys know I, I have books. Get these tools. If you don't already have them, uh, they're, they're a gift. Um, you can pick these up. Yep, that's the one book. That's the most recent. Uh, then there's the Rushing the Floodgates of Heaven book. And then there's the uh, It's Not Meant to Be a Secret. And you get all those three books just for partnering with the ministry. Uh, many of you are already partners. We pray for you and believe for breakthrough for all of you every day that I think to um, pray for those who have been helping us. I, I can say the, the most awesome thing for me as a Christian is to hear that people have learned to hear God's voice and they're living in the fruit of that blessing. And so get these books. Go on the site today uh, and, and get these books sent to you. Because all you have to do is sign up, partner with the ministry um, uh, you know, as a supporter. And then what happens is all those books come to you absolutely free as a gift from us. And uh, you'll learn to hear the voice of God. There's no doubt about it. So do that for yourself. And maybe once you're done reading them, you can pass them on to somebody else to learn to hear the voice of God as well. All right. Hey, Nathan, thank you so much. We finally, the, the, the sound wasn't too bad. We kind of got most of it taken care of, but it'll be better next time. But it was, actually was quite good. All the way Amen. Through. Amen. Thank Thanks you, again, Steve. Nathan. God bless you and in your endeavors. And we'll I'll have to get out there one day and see that whole school thing. I'm really yes. very excited about it now. So, all right. Tomorrow Amen. will be Demonte Edmonds, uh, 11 o'clock Pacific. Don't miss that, everybody. So, love have you a guys. Great day. Have a great day, everybody. And we'll see God you. God bless tomorrow. you, Steve. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you soon.